Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting these six little autumn hedgerow scenes for you. Um, there's a full four part tutorial complete with reference photographs over on Patreon. So if you're interested in a more in-depth lesson for this, then please follow the link below. I've been inspired by um, lots of these different pictures and photographs from Pixabay. Um, and so I shall be just using those as inspiration. I've divided my paper up into six with masking tape. Um, the paper's taped to my board. My board's at an angle of about 45 degrees. Today I'm using Milford cold press paper. It's 140 pound weight and it measures 11 inches by 15 inches or 28 centimeters by 38 centimeters. And using my inspiration board, I'm going to very simply sketch out um, just a few rose hips, different berries and just a few twigs. And so I'm trying to make them look fairly natural, but to also keep them fairly stylized too, so that they're kept quite simple. And sketching in just a few berries with some of them overlapping to give a bit of complexity and depth to the scene and then some just some of the little twigs and branches um, each one will be a separate scene but i want to paint them all at the same time in other words the background so i intend to use masking fluid over my drawings so i'm keeping the shapes nice and simple you can see i'm working quite quickly with my large carpenter's pencil which keeps me drawing or sketching loosely. I can't get too fussy with it. It's a little bit like using a larger brush than, than you usually do. It helps to keep your painting looser so that you don't get bogged down with too much detail. And once I've got my sketches um, where I like them, then I'm going to um, use my Pebeo drawing gum, which is my masking fluid, and I shall mask over my line work sketches here. Um, I'm going to use a fine paintbrush. It's not one of my best because you can ruin your paintbrushes if you're not careful. I find that if you dip your paintbrush into some soap first and rub that into the bristles before you dip it into the masking fluid, it protects the bristles. So you can see I'm just carefully going over my line work and my berries. Now I've laid my board flat to dry and just going to leave that masking fluid for about half an hour to dry off completely and then I can begin to paint it. I'm going to use the wet and wet technique so I'm just swooshing clean water with my large harky brush across the painting and then I'm going to use my misting spray and just spray a few areas and leaving some of the paper dry. That means that I will get soft and hard edges uh, the paint should diffuse nicely where, where it's very wet, but where the paper's dry, as I say, I'll get these nice hard edges which will contrast well. This is quinacrinone gold. This is sap green. I'm going to add perylene green as well for my darker tones. So I'm spreading the paint around and while my board's flat, it's not running around anywhere. But once I get the paint on, I can pick the board up and tip it and tilt it, spray it again if I need to, to get the paint running a little bit more. Um, and then once I get it where I want it, then I can um, leave it to dry. So I'm just going to establish a little bit more of this Quin Gold. I think I'm almost happy with it at this stage. Don't worry if you think it looks like a little bit of a mess. I mean, it, it is a bit of a mess, but it will soften, diffuse, lighten back and should produce quite an interesting sort of um, out of focus, semi abstract background for my seeds. I'm spreading the paint around a bit more, adding a bit more dark behind some of the berries and twigs because then they should really stand out. I hope you can see that it's beginning to soften back 
and we're beginning to see the shapes of the berries coming forward through this. Now it's very important to dab off any paint from your masked areas and also from your masking tape because otherwise as the painting dries the paint could run back into your paintings and cause some runbacks. The last thing I'm going to do is spatter in a little bit of the Quin Gold into the damp wash just to add a little bit more texture and a little bit more light and then I'm going to leave it to dry completely. So here it is, it's dry um, and I've stood my board up at 45 degrees and um, the first thing I'm going to do is um, put in some line work and for this I'm going to use my Faber-Castell waterproof artist pit pen fine liners. One in um, size medium which I think is a 0.5 and the other is a soft brush pen and the reason for this is that using the line and wash technique um, can really help to define the simple shapes a lot more quickly than using the um, a pure watercolour method. And I think it's a lot easier with line and wash to get these sorts of effects. But if you'd rather paint this as a pure watercolour, then leave out this stage, but just add in some dark tones at the end. Because what I'm doing now is I'm outlining everything and I'll be putting in the darkest tones with my fine liner. And then when I add my paint, it's going to give me my extra mid-tones and all my accent colours for the berries, etc. So for this stage, it's simply going around and going over my pencil outlines with my um, fine liner, defining the berries and the twigs, etc. So once I'm happy with my whole outline, then I'll get my uh, brush pen and I'm going to put this thicker line underneath all of the twigs, stems and berries and that will give me my shadow straight away because the lower part of the hedgerow is darker as the sunlight is filtering in from the top. And here you can see all the line work's been done and it looks quite effective. It's just simply going to now be a matter of colouring in the scene. So starting off with the main structural elements of the detail and that's the leaves and the twigs and the teasels. I'm using burnt umber for this and I'm not trying to be too careful painting in every little area carefully. Um, I'm just going to roughly paint it in. I want to leave little bits of the white unpainted paper showing through um, where I've masked things out and this can add a sort of loose freshness to the scene. Varying up the tones um, really helps to keep it fresh too. And here you can see all of the twigs and stems, etc., have been painted in sort of in this sort of hit and miss way with the burnt umber. And now on to the um, accent details. So the first things is these small leaves in this um, lower middle one. And with that, for that, I'm going to use um, sap green and perylene green mixed together and just very lightly and loosely paint in the leaves. And then with the same colour, I'm going to paint in the central blackberry here. Now this is a green unripe blackberry and that should help to show off the riper blackberries on either side. So I'm just dotting in the green. I'm going to make it darker towards the base and more shadowed towards the base and lighter at the top. And while I wait for the, that blackberry to dry, I can start on um, these beautiful red rose hips. For this colour I'm using French Vermilion and my small calligraphy brush and I'm going to paint in all the berries in exactly the same way, um, or the rose hips rather. And for this I will paint them just very simply leaving a small unpainted patch. 
which should give me my um, highlight on the top of each berry and should add to or contribute towards giving me the suggestion of shape and form. I'll be getting some shadow colour using cobalt violet deep hue and touching that into the wet paint at the base very carefully, not much of it, but just to give the berries a darker tone and then painting all of the rose hips um, in exactly the same way um, using those three, um, th those three stages, starting off with French vermilion, secondly leaving a white highlight and then thirdly putting in the shadow colour. Just the blackberries and the slows to paint in now and so I've mixed up my um, cobalt violet deep with a touch of French vermilion and I've added some indigo to deepen it a bit and I'm going to paint in the blackberry um, keeping it darker across the base so I can lift out if any paint across the top if it's a little bit too too dark there and then darken up the base then I can dot in some slightly redder touches across the top And this gives me a slight variation in the hue as well as the tone. And the top blackberry painted in exactly the same way. Now for my slows, I'm going to use the same colour, um, but with a little bit more indigo in it to make them sort of like a darker blue colour. And I'm painting them in quite dark, but slows have a bloom on them, a little bit like plums. And so to create that effect, I'm going to dot on the paint quite thick and then dab it off. And I'm hoping that little light dab will lift off enough paint just to suggest that soft highlight of bloom rather than an overt, sharp, shiny highlight on the other berries. And here's a finished painting. I've removed the tape and um, unfortunately a little bit of the paint ran into and underneath the tape which was dividing them. But I still think they'll be all right once I've cut them out and turned them into cards. I think they'll look quite pretty. I'm hoping that you like the sort of combination of simple but realistic um, rose hips and berries works well against the abstract background. And here's how they look now that I've made them into greetings cards. Um, and I think they look really nice um, against the black and the brown cardboard. Um, I think it suits their sort of autumnal colours. There's a separate tutorial on Patreon showing how I turn the little paintings into cards if you're interested. So please follow the link below for that. Um, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.